Episode 401. This is going to be a great next 100 episodes, I can promise you, because it's the first time ever within the Manly Cam Project that I now have a dedicated day to the podcast. As you guys are aware, it started with me just wanting to improve my communication. Then when guests started coming on, it was how can I learn to ask better questions and listen more and grow and develop. And now because of you guys, because of everyone that is listening and and sharing and giving feedback, I'm dedicating a day to making the podcast better, getting better guests on, doing more research and delivering more value for you guys. So Thank you for the support and super pumped for these next 100 episodes and beyond. So today I'm going to be sharing three ways to invest in yourself. Now, I'm not going to be talking about the obviously events and workshops, podcasts and books and all of that sort of stuff. I want to give you some more specific things to understand around what those investments look like and how they come across because there's a great quote, there is no more profitable investment than investing in yourself. And I scratched my head for a while when I first heard that back in 2014. And a lot of you may be thinking that as well. You're like, well, what about putting money towards a house or putting some money in some stocks or uh, things like that? Don't get me wrong, great investment. But you have to invest in yourself to learn to invest. So hands up, think about this. If you've ever invested in something, and it hasn't gone your way. Well, that is a risk of investing because there is nothing is, sorry, nothing is guaranteed. And the same goes when investing in yourself. I can uh, put my hand on my heart and say, I've spent over $130,000 on my own investment in the last eight years. Now, I never even had that much money to begin with, but it's just been slowly uh, increasing the investment because I wanted to learn things. But here's what I know. You understand how the economy changes and the world around us continues to change. And there are so many things that are out of our control. That's what makes that stressful. But the one thing you will always have control of is yourself, right? So when you start investing into improving your emotional awareness, right? Your uh, sorry, emotional intelligence, you start building your self-awareness through experiences. That's going to be with you forever you will be able to draw upon understanding your values, utilizing your own experiences, going back to small and big wins and, and what decompile or breaking that down to see what worked well for you to then make better decisions, better planning and better strategies moving forward. But if your investment strategy is, hey, Johnny said that you got to buy this house or you got to put this money on this crypto or put it on this stock, you're not really educated, right? You're not really investing. You're taking a gamble. You're trusting someone outside yourself without doing due diligence. Now, don't get me wrong. Awesome to get, uh, I guess, advice or opinions from those around you, but be very careful. Does, do those people that you're taking advice from or investment opportunities from, do they have skin in the game? Do they have a track record or are they just a the bloke who's, always hyped up about the next new thing and probably in cryptocurrencies, you're seeing that a lot. Um, so be mindful of, of all of that, but let's get to it. So obviously investing in yourself helps you gain a better understanding around whatever it may be. And we speak about the eight areas of life within the Man That Can project, you know, from relationships to physical health, mental health and beyond business. Okay, so when you're investing in yourself to improve your relationship, when you're investing in yourself to improve your health, when you're investing in yourself to improve your finances, you're gaining that knowledge. And generally, when you're investing in yourself, part of what should be is an action step, right? It's not just reading. It's not just attending seminars or listening to podcasts. There should be things that you need to implement. When you implement, now you're taking action. Within all action, whether it's delivering you the outcome that you want or the outcome that you desire, or it's not, there is the opportunity for feedback, right? That feedback can teach you what did you do well or what do you need to do better next time? And that is how you continue to improve your skill and increase your odds of achieving whatever it is that you're working towards, okay? So that investment in self, and no one can take that back from you. 
No one can take that away from you. Think about something that you have excelled in in the past. At the beginning, I guarantee you, you know, you're a bit apprehensive about it. You didn't know necessarily what to do. You didn't know how to do it. But at some point, you would have just started, right? You may have got a little bit of a mentorship. You may have got a little bit of a plan. But when you started and you put one foot in front of the other, you started getting feedback. You started learning, oh, cool, I can overcome that. Or maybe I need to tweak this here and uh, modify this out there. And that's going to give me a bit more progress. Left, right, left, right. And that's what you continue to do. I know when I started this podcast, I was doing it for my phone, right? Like I was literally recording with the recording um, voice device on the phone. There was no introduction. There was no sound quality. I didn't have a camera. There, none of that was happening. But I just started. And every episode, I got feedback from myself listening to how I spoke. Uh, I also got feedback from people around me. I also started then you know, doing research and surrounding myself with more podcasters. They gave me uh, feedback, but I also got to learn what they were doing. Right? That's where the YouTube came in. Now I've got multiple camera setups and all of these sorts of things have come, but I wouldn't have been able to start there. It was too overwhelming. There was too many moving parts and I didn't necessarily understand why that needed to be there. So through taking that first step, building an understanding and my awareness, I became better and I'm only going to get better at this. I know that just like you, whatever it is that you're wanting to do, if you invest in yourself first, you can only go up. So I guess that brings me to point number one, which is keep doing right consistently, whatever it is, that you want to invest in, and let's say with yourself, just keep doing that. Every day is an opportunity to learn. Every day is an opportunity to invest in yourself. And as I mentioned before, it could be just hanging around new people, for example. If you hang around um, fitness-minded people, generally, you'll probably, sorry, probably learn something that is going to allow you to improve your health. It may be about a new protein on the market. It may be about some new recovery protocol various things like that. They're generally talking about that. That's how you get the inside scoop. The same with finances, right? If you're hanging around people who invest a lot or are quite wealthy, generally the conversations that they may be having may be about new companies on the market to uh, invest in or however they've made their money. You may start to get that inside scoop that a lot of people don't get, right? And that investment in self or investment in time around those people really pays off. Okay, much like listening to podcasts like this, you may hear me talk about books or have guests on that you go, wow, I resonate with that book or I resonate with that person. I'm now going to go in the rabbit hole and learn and listen to a little bit more around that, right? Which is completely unreal. That's what I do a lot of, okay? So one, keep doing, consistently keep investing in yourself. And like I said, it doesn't, it's not always investing money in yourself. It could just be time. It could be um, networking, getting out of your comfort zone. There's so many things that you can be doing. There's no excuse for a reason why you should be stagnant unless you're fully fatigued. But if you're not wanting to live a mediocre lifestyle, if you're wanting to thrive and reach your potential and create some version of yourself that's only a dream right now, you've got to keep investing. It also helps you make more informed decisions. The next one, invest in your strengths and eliminate the weaknesses. Right? When you know what you're good at, Double down on that because it's going to help you stand out, right? You're going to have a unique sales point or you're going to have a point of difference. I know uh, there's one client of mine who makes, every time I speak to him, you feel like the most valued person around. And I've started really focusing in on that and going, why is that such a strength of his? And why is that not a strength of mine? And I noticed that he's not on his phone. He's really attentive. He always brings into the conversation something that we spoke about last time. So I feel very valued. I feel very heard. And that's a strength that I know he doubles down on. And I also believe it could be a strength of mine. So that's something that I'm investing into. One, hanging around people who do it well. Two, being very attentive and thinking about it, writing down what do I feel makes that a strength? What do I feel I can improve on to make that one of my strengths? So think about whatever your strengths are. It could be in fitness. It could be in your relationship. Uh, it could be in your ability to listen, whatever it is, double down on that, learn more about it and really start to understand it. Because when you understand your strengths, I believe if you take that same process and put it into another area of your life, it too could become a strength. 
Now, I said eliminate weaknesses. What does elimination look like? I don't personally believe in staying away from weaknesses because I find accepting, understanding, and continuing to pay attention to weaknesses humbling. But there are certain instances, for example, if a weakness of yours is your mindset, your self-talk, that is something you want to eliminate. But I also know that it's not something that we can, I don't believe we can eliminate. I do this for a living. I talk about this. I focus on this. And I still have moments where I talk to myself in a poor manner. My self-talk isn't the best. So what do I do? I work with that weakness. I put some uh, boundaries in place or I put some support systems in place for that. So if I know my mindset is weak, it's why I start the day every day with reading because I want to change the input, right? The output that I've got at the moment is negative, right? This is the example. So if I consume positive content, okay, it's going to start fighting against that weakness and go, hey, that's not how I want to think. This is how I'm going to think today. Okay, so work with the weaknesses. If you know something uh, for you, it might be discipline, discipline around the gym. Get yourself an accountability partner. Get yourself a coach, right? something that holds you accountable to. And yeah, you may need to invest money in that. But if that's going to get you the outcome that you want, if that's going to help that weakness not get any weaker and not hold you back, very worthwhile, very worthwhile. Thirdly, so first one, keep doing Keep taking action. So consistency. Secondly, invest in your strengths. Eliminate the weaknesses. Thirdly, look at your environment. Best way to invest in yourself and best way to continue to be, I guess, introduced to new opportunities or new things that can help you be a better version of yourself is be around ambitious people, like-minded, ambitious people. The conversations that you have, the level of conversation that you have will change your life. It will, you know, even I know for myself now, I would not have the business that I have. I would not have the lifestyle that I have had it not been for me investing in my network. Hanging around people who are growth-minded, ambitious, driven, caring people has changed my life because like I said, there's moments where I start to drop my standards and I may sort of default back to my upbringing, which isn't a bad thing once again, but it, I know that I want a higher standard for my, or I need a higher standard for myself in order to gain the outcome that I'm looking for in my life. So by being around those people, I hear them talking about challenges that they may be having. I hear them talking about what they're excited about, maybe investments that they have coming up, maybe a great time that they have with their family. And I go, boom, I want that. Boom, I need to be mindful of that. Boom, I've let that slacken. Right? So the environment is crucial. right? And through all of this, right, through investing in yourself, you're going to get more, sorry, you're going to gain a greater understanding, a greater level of awareness around your values, right? You're going to have more experiences in which you can draw feedback on, which once again is going to improve understanding and awareness. And three, you're going to have a lot more small wins and big wins. Yes, the losses will be there, but it's all experience. They're all points that you can put in your knapsack or your backpack and pull out when you need them for bigger problems coming your way because you, as, the more you level up, the bigger the challenges that you're going to have, but you're going to be ready to rise to that occasion, right? Your skill set may not be there. Your support system may not be there yet, but if you're prepared to grow, if you're prepared to rise, that will start to happen. I know, and this is probably one last thing, before I was investing in myself, the first thing that I decided was I wanted to earn a million dollars. And obviously, from what I've said, hey, hang around million dollar earners, you'll pick up some pretty, um, you'll be able to fast track that, I believe, because of the environment and the company that you keep. But I then was faced with that challenge. Why would seven figure earners want to hang around with me when I'm earning 40 grand a year? Um, my mindset's in the dirt. I don't really have much value to offer them just yet. So that's where I did dive into books, podcasts, started paying for mentors and events and kept growing my own value and self-worth to the point until those people started uh, seeking me out for coaching. And now a lot of my friends are, are successful and once again, not just using monetary terms, but have great uh, relationships with their partner, the ones that I aspire to have. They're incredible parents, live incredible lifestyles and do have great businesses. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this was a powerful episode for you. Remember, do something today to be better for tomorrow. 
That could be leaving a review on the podcast, share it, or even save it. And until next episode, have an incredible time.